What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside... Wow, I don't... Janet, like... I wow. haven't introduced you in forever. No, I haven't introduced you in forever, but then you kind of do stuff with us all the time now. Wow. So you're wow. usually, if you're a guest, I would be like, you know, independent content, uh, you know, she's over on Min Max, but like you do so much with us. You need like an official nickname, I guess. You need like an official yeah. nickname now. Shit. Fuck, that'd, we be, think- that'd be good. Usually oh. Blessing just says gay monosis ak janet which always gives me an identity crisis like i'm a sure. like a content creator within a person on the side which is not totally inaccurate but yeah i guess i could use something you need if an anyone, official kind of funny ideas. nickname you need an official kind of funny nickname. it's janet garcia everybody yay janet's here yay. Hi. Hey. good morning hey, how are you? good morning I'm to you. Good. I, you you pointed out yesterday on twitter which i really appreciated the fact that you're like hey i've been doing so much stuff with kind of funny this year because again you're basically you're basically a part-timer you're in you're in you're in the stable you're doing the thing uh but you're like you don't actually ever host with me <laughs> so it's exciting that yeah, we're finally I've, doing stuff i haven't seen you i think almost ever i think the only time we've actually done formal content was ps i love you like a year ago or if you count right. like when i jumped in for like the awards for like 10 seconds you were technically sure. there but like i was on ps i love you but only with blessing i uh-huh. did games daily with tim and with blessing and with bet but like yeah i've, I've never seen you well i mean the big what's thing, up course, you know nothing. it's nice hey, nice to finally you? meet you greg it's a pleasure to meet. yeah first off yeah. fuck you we talk all the time <laughs> i talk to you that's about content all the time. yeah so it's like i've sat i've sat in this chair and spoken to you but that's yeah, not yeah, yeah. the same as that's not the same as content it's pretty totally close, but, but, but more, more than that i want to do is you know how am i i want to know how you're doing because of course I, yeah you talked about it you know i think i we last guested right when you went independent i think it, we brought you on shows and talked to you there or you and me when i was hosting but more importantly than that, like last time, last week when you c- came in to do Games Daily, you actually sat in the number one chair. That's a, that's rare yeah. air to actually host the show. That's something, you know, we let Fran do once. We're like, never again. You know, you're going to be back to do it. How did that feel? It was it was cool. It was, a, you know, it's always different when you're hosting. It's funny because people who don't, you know, like do content, it kind of looks the same. Like I told my community, like, hey, I'm going to be hosting Games Daily. And a lot of people, you know, are also best friends who are in my community and they're like, oh, well, like, what's, what's, like, kind of the difference between the two? Because sometimes, especially when it's not a guest, it's not always, like, I guess, clear to an audience the difference. But when sure. you're the host, you definitely feel it. And I'm sure you know that as the person oh, yeah. who's getting the run of show together and, like, you know, commanding the room and moving the, the conversation along. Like, it just kind of hits a little bit different. But, you know, on the whole, it was... It was comfortable. It was cool. I loved your idea of bringing Ben on. Like, I thought that was really fun. Uh, the comments were hilarious. Like, there were people who were like, I clicked in and I was like, is YouTube glitching? Like, is this the right <laughs> thumbnail? But, and then I was like, oh, cool. And it was just uh, really nice seeing so many people from, like, across these communities be excited oh, yeah. for, like, a slew of different reasons. It was cool. Yeah, I know that was all I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I talked publicly about it, but I talked somewhere about it uh, and mainly to Tim, too, when it was happening. Him and I were doing some business conversations. And at the time, I was like, also, are you looking at the Twitch channel? Like how awesome this is that like Janet's hosting. Everybody knows her because she's been on enough stuff that nobody everybody just understands what's happening. But on top of that, it's like a min max takeover. And everybody's cool with that. Everybody thinks that's cool. It's not that like we're not there. So the show isn't kind, properly kind of funny. Like we've gone far enough to establish what this brand is and what kind of funny is and the roster of you know people who come through to be a part of it let alone the fact that if we collaborate with somebody like ben over at min max it's gonna be good yeah it's good stuff on the internet good stuff uh today Finally. let's talk about stuff that may or may not be good <laughs> we're gonna talk about ubisoft and free-to-play games assassin's creed dlc reviews being in and so much more because this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms we come together to talk about the nerdy news you need to know about if you like that you should go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can write in with your questions comments concerns everything about the daily video game news to be part of the show uh, of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can get each and every episode ad free you can get each and every episode with the exclusive post show we do and you can get a bevy of other exclusive bonuses over there or just toss us a few bucks to say hey you're doing a good job however if you got no bucks to toss our way it's no big deal you can watch us record the show live for free on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games just like uh Oing, Obi Boing, Obi Boing, hey. yeah, uh, just just Jib, uh, it's just Geraldo, all are and are early. Uh, Kevin texted me about nine thirty. Was like, aren't we doing the show at nine thirty today? And I said, oh crap! And I ran down here and jumped on Discord. Janet was there; she was ready to go. She yeah, was I was too polite to say ask anything. I was like, oh, 
I'll just wait. I'll just lurk in the background. See, that's yeah, the exactly. difference. That's the line. I'm like, this, I'm just here. Yeah, you're like, whatever. I'll be <laughs> when they're there. I'll be there, but not a second before then. No, uh, of course, if you're not. not catching it live on twitch.tv slash kind of if you are watching live, I guess you'd say first on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday. Housekeeping for you, you might say if you're one of the live folks, why are you 30 minutes early? It's because it's a crazy day of content at Kind of Funny. Uh, for starters, after uh, we do this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily, the Twitch stream will go dark. We are going to go record an embargoed episode of the Kind of Funny podcast with the one, the only, Justin Roiland, uh, of course, from Rick and Morty fame. That'll go live tomorrow, and you'll understand the embargo when it does. Uh, after we do that, at what, 1 o'clock is what we're saying? Uh, no, Mike Mike will be back for a Twitch stream to get everybody into their uh, usual groove of streaming. Uh, if that wasn't enough for you in terms of content, especially on the live front today, Joey and I are hosting an LG OLED stream tonight with DJ Khaled and Megan Fox. <laughs> they are playing Fortnite. They said, this is already a weird combination. How can we make it weirder? And me and Joey were like, we will come in to shoutcast and host this event for you. So you can watch that on twitch.tv slash evil geniuses tonight. For us to be a bunch of goons with DJ Khaled and Megan Fox. I'm sure it can only go incredibly well. Twitch.tv slash Evil Geniuses tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if that wasn't enough, on PS I Love You XOXO right now on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, uh, Roosterteeth.com, and podcast services around the globe. Uh, there's a brand spanking new episode that dives into our behind closed doors, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart previews. Uh, Blessing and myself, and even Paris Lily, uh, went and uh, watched a whole bunch of Ratchet and Clank, a new demo what sat in a bunch of panels and we have a great great conversation about that over there so that's all the content outside of the content you're watching there's a lot of content i know there's content janet you do content you do are you, are you putting up any new content soon for people to watch some of this content uh, yeah i'm gonna be live on twitch.tv backslash game on assist from around like two to five ish uh doing animal crossing stuff and this saturday i am finally playing demon souls we did Ooh. a community channel point redemption thing where everyone constantly is like Hey, I see you playing Animal Crossing a lot. Souls games, Souls games, please. And I'm like, not even close to any of the other things not, I do. These are not but the sure. same. These are not. No, the they're same. not. So wait. they're not the same. Hoping the skills transfer over a lot of inventory management. You know, I think it's it's gonna be all right. So what's your commitment? Was your commitment I will try it, or is it that hey I have to beat it? I will try it uh, for two streams, four hours a piece. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So that's a lot. That's that's gonna be good. Okay. Like yeah. We'll up. see how far I actually get. Is that about a time? Sure. All right, so but, that's Saturday. Um, right. Yeah. Yep, Saturday, 5 to 9 p.m. PT. Perfect. For now, thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, Blackjack and Tom Bach. We're brought to you today by DoorDash and Burrow, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> time for some news. I got seven items on the Roper Report. Uh, Baker's Dozen. And if you're wondering, Kevin, yes, I counted those while you did the doot to doot to doots because that's something I didn't get to yet in my rundown of the show. Uh, number one, though, let's talk about Ubisoft, uh, Ubisoft AAA and the free to play race. Uh, Janet, did you see this yesterday that Ubisoft made a whole bunch of people angry on Twitter when they announced, hey, we're backing off committing to three to four AAA games or a year. Instead, we're going to look into free to play. People lost their goddamn minds, Janet. Did you see it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, people are often losing their minds over things of this note. Whenever in, in general, like free to play has become sort of the new like mobile game or mobile version, like that kind of yeah. stigma is attached to free to play all the time, though. It's funny because at the same time, then you see games like I know later we're going to talk about Knockout City, where certain games come out and people expect it to be a free to play thing. So it's, it's kind of this weird dichotomy of people hating free to play, but then also sometimes seeing games and expecting them to be free to play. Uh, a lot of push and pull going on over there. So uh, with all of that happening yesterday on Twitter, there was a whole bunch of races to then clarify it. We're going to go to Andy Robinson at VGC, who has the update along with the original story in here for you to understand exactly what happened. And then I want to talk about it. Ubisoft has moved to clarify comments made in its latest earnings results call that it will be investing in more, quote, high end free to play games. In a statement issued to VGC on Wednesday, the Assassin's Creed publisher claimed that its stated intention to expand its free-to-play offerings doesn't mean it will be reducing the number of premium games it releases. 
Quote, our intention is to deliver a diverse lineup of games that players will love across all platforms, the spokesperson told VGC. Quote, we are excited to be investing more in free-to-play experiences. However, we want to clarify that this doesn't mean reducing our AAA offering. Our aim is to continue to deliver premium experiences uh, to players such as Far Cry 6, Rainbow Six Quarantine, Riders Republic, and Skull and Bones, whatever the fuck that's actually coming out, <laughs> to name a few, while also expanding our free-to-play portfolio and strengthening our brands to reach even more players. In Tuesday's full year's earnings call, Ubisoft CFO Frederick Duguet uh, said the company's intention was to become less reliant on premium game releases by releasing more free-to-play experiences based on its biggest brands. Quote, in line with the evolution of our high-quality lineup that is increasingly diverse. Man, that's a lot of, that is a lot of corporate speak right there. Uh, we are moving on from our prior commitment regarding releasing three to four premium AAAs per year, he said. Uh, it is indeed no longer a proper indication of our value creation dynamics. For example, our expectation for Just Dance and Riders Republic are consistent with some of the industry's AAA performers. Additionally, we are building high-end free-to-play games to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term, he added. This is purely a financial this is purely a financial communication evolution and doesn't change the fact that we continue to expect a high cadence of content delivery including powerful premium and free to play new releases. Posting on Twitter, one of Ubisoft's senior analysts claimed the company's comments were in reference to quote free to play becoming a larger share of the revenue pie and not an indication that there will be less traditional paid games like Assassin's Creed. The publisher said on Tuesday that the current fiscal year ending on March 31st, 2022, will include the releases of Far Cry 6 and Rainbow Six uh, Quarantine by September 30th, uh, plus Riders Republic, The Division Heartland, and Roller Champions. And it confirmed during this earning call, that earnings call uh, that it has no AAA games scheduled for release during the second half of the fiscal year, which includes the Christmas season. Janet is it time to panic? What is happening? Are AAA games dead? Is the next Assassin's Creed free to play? What's your take? I think we're always asking, are AAA games and our single player games dead? And I think the answer is always no, but we see a bigger slew of other types of games appear. So I think it, you know, even though this was very much corporate speak and trying to say, hey, it's it's not different. It's just changed, which, you know, it's right. kind of the same difference, right? Um, uh, yeah, I think we'll always have single player have a, a strong role. I don't think you need to be worried if you're someone that likes single player games. It just means that maybe some of the trendier or bigger deal releases aren't going to be ones that hit for you. And I think that always happens as we see like waves of new genres take over or more genres kind of come into the fold as being popular. Um, I remember this happening like during the sort of I think it was like around the PS3 360 era, like the Wii era, where I kind of stopped playing a lot of games because I wasn't into motion controls. So I sort of backed off. Sure. So I think these things always come come in waves. And I don't think it's anything that you need to necessarily be worried about. I don't think we're going to, you know, lose the Ubisoft staple titles if those are titles that you're excited about. Um, but yeah, it also means that maybe I don't know if they're going to release necessarily a new AAA single player IP. I think we kind of know what Ubisoft does at this point, And yeah. this news doesn't surprise me at all. In that's the thing about it, where obviously you talked about it earlier, that right now free to play for so many pay people is the scarlet letter that mobile games used to be. And some people still is. But, hey, this game's free to play. And it's a, an immediate jump to, oh, it's money grubbing. Oh, it's going to be locking content behind paywalls. Oh, it's doing all this different kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't happen. I'm not saying that wouldn't be what Ubisoft's going for. I just think it could be done in interesting ways that wouldn't do that. It might actually work with the Ubisoft thing. Before we even get to a question that I think uh, it jumps on this, I want to say that this didn't shock me yesterday. The way they phrased it, of course, and the the blunderous way they did, where the quote clearly is like, three to, we're not doing three to four AAA games anymore. We're focusing on a free-to-play. It's like, you, that when those words came out of the exec's mouth, he wasn't like, ah, oh, crap. Like, I've just launched a million tweets and articles. But May 6th, Kind of Funny Games Daily, we reported from the official Ubisoft communication with this. While work continues on the Division 2, other Ubisoft teams have been exploring additional ways to introduce the Division to even more players. Today, we're pleased to share that Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland, a free-to-play game set in the Division universe, is in development at our Red Storm studio. Heartland is a standalone game that doesn't require previous experience with the series, but will provide an all-new perspective on the universe in a new setting. Uh, the game will be made available in 2021-2022 on PC, consoles, and cloud, right? That pops up, and I was like, oh, 
okay, like this speaks before we even knew any of the stuff that Andy's talking about is v, is via GC article, right? This is already talking about like, oh, how do you make how what how do you make the division bigger, which clearly has a barrier to entry, and even though Division Two and especially the, the content that came after the launch of Division Two did so well and enough did well enough that they're making more of it, but you have a movie coming, you have a book coming, and you want have a free to play game coming because guess what? You need to get people through the front door, especially if they're intimidated by it. Like, I am excited for the Division Heartland as a fan. I'm excited to see what that game is going to look like and what it's going to be. And I will be incredibly disappointed if it is. Great, here you go. You get 15 minutes of playtime a day. And if you don't earn enough Division coins, you got to pay. Like, uh, that'll suck. Or if I want really cool guns, I got to pay for really cool guns. That'll suck. I don't expect that out of what they would do th with the Division, though. I feel like Ubisoft, for the most part, knows what gamers want it's what you're talking about earlier janet of like at this point we know what a ubisoft game is we know yes. and, and i i always talk about it i like ubisoft games a lot i love a good checklist i love going through and exploring a world like i don't think they're going to come out and immediately bungle this and immediately go for my pocketbook am i crazy am i too naive no i think that's totally spot on and i think you bring up a good point of free to play is the difference between games that I've played a little bit of in games that I wouldn't play any of because usually yeah. if I'm on the fence with something like there there isn't a popular free to play game that I haven't at least played a little bit of just to see what's like. and it doesn't cost you nothing what I'm gonna lose money out on this not trying yeah. it out you might as well it's the same thing that happens with when we see games on Game Pass where there are so many times or you know y'all have discussed on PS I love you of how PlayStation Plus can serve as that point of oh, I'm going to wait for it to come here or I'm hoping it'll show up on, you know, my free games and then I'll try it out and they can, you know, increase their player base and their install base and pick up new fans. Um, yeah, I think it's a great entry point into established franchises. And I think if anything, in, at least in this example, it speaks to trying to leverage free to play to bolster that mainline IPs, those staple games that Ubisoft is known for. So 100%. yeah, I think that makes sense. And what's kind of nice too is like with free to play because of the model and what it seems to sort of open up budget wise, cause maybe, you know, cost maybe a little bit less because you're kind of developing it over time and seeing how it goes is I think it might also lead to more experimentation. I mean, those aren't always gonna be wins. Like what was it mentioned? Roller Champions was mentioned here. Like that's a game I previewed at E3 what 2019 back when we could go outside which seems like forever ago and I liked it fine and I remember talking to other people at the event like hey what'd you guys think and everyone enjoyed it but it was one of those things where it was like I could see this blowing up I could also see no one ever talking about it and you don't really know how that stuff's gonna hit even when you have a good game so I, I do think there's like a lot of risk there and it makes sense for them to be you know sort of wary of it approaching it with caution but it also allows for like a little bit more experimentation because the risk isn't as big as a big staple AAA title, especially when you're a powerhouse like Ubisoft, where, like you said, we all know what Ubisoft games are. And I think to a degree, there might be some hesitance on trying to deviate from that because there is an expectation when you see Ubisoft, what kind of game you're going to get. Well, here and here's where I want to bring in the one, the only, the nanobiologist who wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, hi, Greg and Janet. So Ubisoft is downsizing their AAA game development for more free-to-play games, which I think was written before this clarification, but his questions still make the point. First, why did everyone immediately assume that free-to-play games can't be a AAA experience? Second, is this actually a blessing in disguise? Let's take a look at last year. In the span of two months, Ubisoft released three giant games back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Each of them were massive and overflowed with content. All three sold pretty dang well, but Valhalla sold the best, understandably. But the general consensus was dot, 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 it's just too damn much. There's no time to play them all if you wanted to. Also, first world problem, uh, but that is still a valid complaint when chatting with people who want to break into the industry. With the downsizing of AAA development, could we see one less potential cannibalization of sales with their big tentpole games spread out throughout the year, and two, longer spaces between releases so annualization doesn't happen again, or three, shorter games to come out in the interim between the giant releases? And honestly, I honestly wouldn't mind a 10 to 20 hour Assassin's Creed game that's told, co in a, told a coherent, dense story, all while covering an area that isn't giant like japan thank the, thanks the nanobiologist thank the nanobiologist <laughs> thank you that's <laughs> that gets that is what gets interesting about it would be what if it was a ubisoft game like we're talking about but was free to play even in the, the live chat uh on my last nerve popped up and said if if they did the division like genshin impact but a looter shooter rather than a gotcha uh, it would be good or gotcha it would be good 
and that's part of it, right? Where you're, we're going to get into after this uh, the reviews for Assassin's Creed Valhalla DLC, and I put. 35 hours into Assassin's Creed Valhalla did not come anywhere near the credits of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So yep. putting more content into Assassin's Creed Valhalla makes me go, that's awesome. But like, I still have so much to do when I spend money on that. What if Assassin's Creed Valhalla or an Assassin's Creed similar to the division heartland, which isn't a numbered division. What if that was a free to play game, Janet? I don't, I don't see that happening. Like the yeah. you know one of the things like nanobiologist mentions in the question is you know why is it assumed that free to play can't be a triple A experience? I think it's because of you know basically the expectations we've built around games, which is how we whenever we're analyzing anything, we're doing it through the lens of all the information, all the experiences that have come before us, and it's a combination of when we see free to play, there's an expectation that this is something that's going to be built out over time, and also when you have triple A experiences for the most part despite how far we've come in patches, DLCs, it's kind of a one and done experience. Even when something like, you know, is redeemed or improved on, you know, y'all had a lot of conversations about how Ghost went and how much better the DLC made it. And I'm like, I wouldn't know because I didn't play the DLC because that's not how I consume those type of games. And I don't think I'm alone in that experience. I mean, statistically, you know, you mentioned the length of Valhalla. Most players don't finish most of the games they play. It is very rare for someone to actually like see the credits in a game, regardless of size. And I, th I imagine those numbers get even more dramatic when you have these bigger games versus something that's free to play or even just like an ongoing model. That's something that you'll dip into over time. You know, I, I've the main like not free to play games because these are tri AAA games, but for ongoing experiences, I mostly stick with Nintendo. So I'm on Splatoon, I'm on Animal Crossing. And for stuff like that, there are those kind of re-ups of conversations with big updates, with like big events that you see in either in the ongoing space or the free-to-play space. And in the AAA space, that doesn't happen. Like it is true that, you know, we're going to look at reviews. So people are covering it. People want to talk about it. But it doesn't hit nearly the same because of how we consume stuff. So I think that's oh, why like free-to-play can't be AAA. Also, I imagine budget-wise, like how are you... You're going to spend all the money on a triple A game, but it's like free. You know, it, it's just such a massive there's a massive chasm between the amount of budget it would cost to make a triple A and the amount of money you're not getting initially, at least because it's free to play. Like, I don't I don't know if anyone is rich enough slash willing to make that financial bet on a product like that. Well, it's like, you know, you, you called out earlier in terms of, oh, you went, what was it, uh, Roller City or whatever the hell it's called? I can't remember. Knockout City is the Roller dodgeball Champions. game. Roller, Roller Champions. Champions is the Ubisoft one. Knockout City is the dodgeball one that's And what was, the one, uh, what was the one that came from Ninja Theory that we all played that at E3 and then it came out and it's already dead? Uh, oh. You, you know what I'm talking about. Chat, which one am I thinking of here? Uh, Ninja Theory's Xbox uh f not free to play uh, was it now free to I wonder play? If whatever I played this they're multiplayer bleeding edge thank you play it forward game oh it. okay and was that free to play I love these game names too these are like the most game Dude, name roller bleeding edge you know and they throw it into a random blood name goblin just <laughs> but that again when it was not free to play thank you very much uh that again is what we're talking about though in terms of how do you get these games out and how do they hit what do you do with them it was on game pass thank you nano that's why i'm thinking it was free uh and it is that dice roll to it and I'm not saying uh, Division Heartland is the one I'm very interested to see. What does that mean? What is the Division Heartland? All right. It's a new division experience in a new place and it's free to play. Cool. What does that look like? Because what gets weird with it and how I start thinking of could you do an Assassin's Creed free to play or something to that effect would be giving a check. Like what I loved about Odyssey in particular and Odyssey is a game I saw all the way through to the end. Right. And I've gone back for for DLCs and I was talking about it on today's PS. I love you because I've played the Assassin's Creed Valhalla thing. We're about to did not finish it. Started playing the Assassin's Creed Valhalla thing. We're in a review here in a second and been like all it did was make me go, man, I should go back and finish the DLC of Odyssey because I love Odyssey so much. But Odyssey, I loved because it had such great chapter breaks where it felt like you'd be playing and you were on this story and then you'd get to the end of that story, but it would set up the next chapter. So I felt like I accomplished something. Whereas like with Eivor's story in Valhalla, I very much feel like it's an RPG and it's just life rolling on and on and on. And it's like, all right, what am I, what am I doing? What is the overall thing I'm trying to accomplish anymore? I don't know what it is. I would think if we were looking at Odyssey, and again, lots of tweaks would go into this to make it an actual free-to-play game and a financial model that could succeed. But if it was that you were giving every three months one of those chapters and like if i'm paying for the chapter i guess to go through there's you know a, whatever a very basic thing going on but i'm paying into the chapters i'm obviously paying if i want different armor sets some are unlockable so you're not totally getting money grubbed for it i wonder if that could go because what you're talking about is interesting too in terms of how 
people consume and also how the industry at large covers games, right? Where Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and this is me, Greg, business hat part of it, right? Printed uh, views for us when that when we were up on the we're running up to that game when we were covering that game and doing previews of that game and I think today you can see the difference in that in the industry where go to all the different sites like the Metacritic I have for it for the next article right is not populated with eighty seven reviews it's a very select handful of reviews uh, this morning and I made when I did all my rundown right IGN did not have a review for Wrath of the Druids up which of course is crazy because it's IGN but. DLCs don't track as well as big games because people are way less inclined to go back to the DLC. So it's not like something, you know, the it, for video game coverage, it's always the run up to launch. That's why you're seeing Ratchet everywhere today because people care about stuff they haven't played. Once you have the game, then it becomes a very select group of people care about the new content coming to a game. Yeah, well, the DLC, the thing is like, you already need to have had the game. So like, yeah. it's such a small number. I mean, you mentioned like, coverage wise uh back when i was on the guides team i remember like dlc never really did like anything for us and we rarely covered it and game help is like and i know some people who are listening to this might be like well how many people are really looking up game help it's it's everyone it is literally everyone it is the pillar of traffic at most out like it it's it is massive you would any any given day of the week anyone's guide traffic is just like way higher than any of anything else any of anything else and and yes. the fact that people don't look at that for dlc is telling because it means that they're not really like playing or engaging with it at the same massive level that they are with a campaign i think what you bring up is interesting too with the oh what if they did chapters i'm gonna push back on on that and say i don't think that model maybe turns as like much attention as people might hope it does because sure. the only reason i say that is because don't nod recently made their games non-episodic their game tell me why it was the first time i, I believe it was the first time you're wrong if I'm wrong that that studio released like a game uh, like that that wasn't me, episodic remember, remember me wasn't uh, was, was it episodic it was just it was, was it just chapter drop, based yeah. though was it just like all was that like did they like pitch that I remember they, they kind of making a note of saying like hey this isn't going to be this way and they're not doing that moving forward either and even the team that's on life is strange which I'm forgetting the studio offhand it's not don't not it's the other one the one they made before the storm deck nine deck nine, deck nine yes Ugh. Deck nine that was making life don't is strange. Deck, uh, <laughs> don't nod. Deck nine. I hear you. Yes. Uh, yeah. They were not doing episodic either. So I wonder if I would love to know what is the the logic behind that. I imagine it has to do with player attention and retention. Oh, it's and also the conversation that. of I, like. I mean, and I, I remember think... too. Like, I was hard to keep up with the review when I was like really quick. I was doing trying to do the Please. episodic ones, and I'm like every now and then it dropped when i was too busy to review it and then i never got like a full review like ign never got that full review of life is strange too because i only reviewed like one or two of the other chapters and i didn't have time to do it so yeah i don't know if that actually ends up working either if they wanted to like convert triple a to free to play through episode i think i think that's a huge part of it right because i, I to even uh, the problem of course and it's one of the reasons i think you know so you saw telltale and when you read about them and even if you live through it of like when they would be like, here, the they'd launch episode one, and then it'd be two months to the next episode, then three months to episode three, then maybe two months to episode four, then six months to episodes. Like, you lose people's attention. And even for Tell Me Why, which, of course, the Xbox exclusive uh, Don't Nod game, right? Which was, hey, cool, we're doing three episodes, and it's three weeks in a row. That was the one that even got me, where it was like, awesome, I'm so stoked. And I played through episode one, and I was like, that's great. Can't wait for episode two. Got distracted, got into something else, and I've never made it back. And I, I'm a Don't Nod fan. I just haven't gotten back to it because your attention span is so limited, right? And I think even giving you that gap of it. And I wonder, as we talk about Ubisoft again, to come back to it and what the division is, I wonder how much of Division 2 success is influencing these kind of decisions. Where it was that idea that Division 2 did fine at launch, but they were very talkative of like, you know, this last batch of uh, content they were doing for it, saw more people coming back and playing, and saw higher concurrence because of people being excited for that season pass because of the, you know, fail out stuff because of where the story was ending. And I wonder if they're trying to wrap their heads. Heartland's going to be the test. Heartland will be the one of like, what does a Ubisoft free to play ongoing experience look like? And I got to play this now. Cause it's again, I wouldn't play it normally. So I have to check it out. Like you said, what do you have to lose? Yeah. I don't do lose it. money. I'll lose money on this. If I don't download it. Easy peasy. Uh, let's move on. This has been a fun conversation. We're still in Ubisoft land. Don't worry. Uh, number two, let's talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Wrath of the Druids review roundup. We're starting at Metacritic. We're at 9 a.m. this morning. The Metacritic was 81. Uh, Push Square gave it an eight. Robert Ramsey wrote, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Wrath of the Druids is one of the series' best expansions. In its... 
Oh, I'm sorry. In its, no, that's right. in its beautiful but somber open uh, world depiction of Ireland, it provides an intriguing story that combines history and folklore to great effect. A range of new weapons and armor sets help sweeten the deal, while more engaging combat scenarios keep you on your toes. If you're already, fan, if you're already a fan of Valhalla, this Emerald Isle adventure is very hard to fault. Meanwhile, GameSpot gave it a five. Jordan, Ram, uh, Jordan Ramey says, uh, if Valhalla is a love letter to the Assassin's Creed series, connecting each of the previous 11 mainline games and unifying their frayed plot lines into one cohesive thread, Wrath of the Druids is an unneeded and frankly unwanted postscript. It adds nothing worthwhile to Eivor's story and her overarching character arc of learning uh, that there's more to life than subverting fate. And in terms of mechanics and features, it doesn't satisfyingly iterate on any of Valhalla's existing gameplay loops, providing another dozen hours of the exact same, act I'm sorry, the same activities you've ar you already get from the existing 60 plus hour campaign. Those still playing Valhalla may find some benefit in going through Wrath of the Druids for some extra XP to boost Eivor's character level and find some awesome loot and combat abilities, but the DLC is a mediocre Assassin's Creed experience, even without comparing it to Valhalla's main campaign. Ouch. Damn. Yeah, right? <laughs> Ouch. Uh, before we get into the one I have the one I have here, uh, like I said, I had gotten review code for this and started it on Sunday. I'm I, I talked about it on PSLV. I think I'm somewhere between an hour and two hours in. So just say an hour and a half, split the difference or whatever. And I am more on not as not as negative because obviously Jordan's talking about plot lines and what it does to the character and yada yada yada. But I'm more in Jordan's camp of like my thought of playing it was like, oh yeah, this is more. This is more Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Like, I'm in a new place that kind of looks like the old place, and I'm doing the exact same activities, which, again, if you love Valhalla, go for it. But as somebody who 35 hours of Valhalla and hasn't gone back to it, like... Yeah. You got Valhalla okay. at home. Exactly. <laughs> Why, and it's back to free to play. Why would I spend my money on this expansion if I already have so much of the game to play on top of it, right? But... What I wanted to do is give you a required reading over at thegamer.com. Uh, Keen Mar wrote uh, uh, his uh, Assassin's Creed uh, review over there, and it's an interesting one because he is Irish and lives in Ireland. So I wanted to read you three graphs from it because they're a little bit long, but I really, really like it and encourage everybody to go to The Gamer and read Keen Mar's uh, post here, all right? About 20 minutes into Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Wrath of the Druids, I find myself leading a raid on a monastery located less than five kilometers away from my real-life house. I should specify, the monastery isn't there anymore, having been demolished during a similar Viking raid over 1,000 years ago, and I've never been to the and I've ne and I've never been to the island because it's privately owned. Parentheses. For some weird reason, it also has a local colony of 100 domesticated, absolutely not indigenous wallabies. As for my house, at least where it should be located, there's little more than a hilly meadow teeming with pretty flowers in Valhalla, as opposed to one of the hundreds of thousands of suburban properties in contemporary Dublin. Uh, the disparities, disparities are certainly a bit jarring, and yet it feels like I know this place. I make my way to Dublin City, still an enormous Viking port in this world, without even looking at the quest marker. I've clarified all of the above for two reasons. One, Wrath of the Druids offers an exceptionally accurate take on Ireland, and two, I'd be the first person to tell you if it didn't. I lived here my whole life and am particularly well acquainted with my heritage, from history to mythology to culture and Irish language. Since I was little, I've always thought the stories I grew up with would make fine material for a game. Ireland in the 9th century is a land of many kings, raw and vital, and, un and untamed in a way that rivaled even the most legendary Viking drangers. In fact, the Vikings were almost immediately unsuccessful in their attempts to subdue the Irish people. Uh, they were defeated swiftly and decisively, and so the overarching tone of Wrath of the Druids is radically different from the base game that precedes it. Rat, and then I go, I'm skipping the rest of this amazing article that I think you should read just to get to conclude his final paragraph here. Go read it, the gamer. Uh, Wrath of the Druids is a smorgasbord of Norse and Irish, Irish history and mythology that is impossible to stop going, gorging on. Uh, Kiera, I'm probably saying that wrong, tells tales of the uh, Morrigan feeding on the deaths of fallen heroes in order to infiltrate the minds of mortal men, while Eivor retorts that war is already our fate and destiny, with Ragnarok looming large over life like an ever-encroaching cataclysm. Baldur's blood is invoked while the Almighty's wrath is feared, Irish songs float alongside Danish hums, and the entire experience is one of two cultures becoming intertwined like a perfect DNA helix. It is a remarkable achievement both in historical representation, mythological association, and sheer unbridled design. I would have been the first person on earth to take issue with a game that I fe if I felt ne the need, and I'd have shouted it from the heavens to Thor himself hurled a lightning bolt at me instead. 
I want to use this review to tell you that, yes, you should play Wrath of the Druids. And, yes, there's probably a bit of Norse uh, in most of us Irish folk. That's probably why we're even better drinkers now than we used to be. As Flan Senna says in Wrath of the Druids, Salante, and I'm saying that's totally wrong. Cheers. Uh, what are you waiting for? Go play it already. Uh, I uh, Keen Mars review here on thegamer.com actually got me more interested to go back into it, especially this part about how like they <laughs> the Vikings actually get defeated, and that's part of the storyline here. Like I'd like to see that because obviously Valhalla is so we're the Vikings and we're awesome and we're taking over England. Yeah, that was really beautiful. I love a nice, like, flowery, personal angle, especially something like this where it's a little bit more of a known quantity. Um, and just in general, like, Keen's, like, one of the best writers, like, out there. So, 100%, yeah, definitely yeah, for that. I, this is definitely my, uh, I shouldn't say my first, but uh, the first time I've read something of his and it's, like, pop for me of, like, oh, this is a name I need to follow. Uh, thegamer.com. Go read the entire piece. It's fantastic. Uh, Janet, do you care at all about Assassin's Creed? Like, are you, you going to, do you even have a th thought of kicking this Ooh. DLC around? Uh, no, not at all. I actually have never played an Assassin's Creed wow. game. What? Um, I don't know what my first should be. I'm thinking, I'm guessing Odyssey, Odyssey because everyone Odyssey, says that one's sure. fire. So Odyssey, um, yeah. But I have Valhalla. Like, I don't have, listen to Barrett. I have Valhalla. No, I just, yeah. like, I have access no. to the game. But Odyssey's I also so probably good. have access to Odyssey. But yeah. Like, but we'll see like when I, I find the 60 hours. It's what me and Barrett were, you know, giving each other shit for on uh, uh, PS I Love You Today, right? Of like, he, Barrett thinks Valhalla is better than Odyssey. I think Odyssey is better than Valhalla. But it's literally like arguing over your ice cream flavors, where it's like, I think it's very much like, which which setting do you want? And I know, like, I'm sure I actually don't know his thoughts about Valhalla, but I'm sure Yousef wants to bust through the wall and tell me about how great Origins is. Like, yeah, this... in chat we got Origins, we got like I've seen some Black Flag, seen some Syndicate. Black like... Flag's great too. Like, and that's the thing is like it's really what is going to speak to you. But like as I said on it, like I'm not trying to take anything away. I love how RPG Valhalla is. I love how much there is. I love how beautiful it runs at 60 frames a second. But I, my thought really is I'm going to download Odyssey again and finish the DLC there that I never finished just because I like uh, oh my God, Barrett. so much. There he is. Barrett, no, we're saying it's fine, Barrett. Barrett, it's fine. Play what you want to play. Don't worry. Everybody's okay. Uh, Janet, believe it or not, I have even more video game news for you. But... Before I do that, I want to tell you about patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where, of course, you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. And, of course, you can get the show ad free. But guess what, Jack? You didn't go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. So it's time to hear from our sponsors. Kevin hit it. This podcast is brought to you by DoorDash. Do you really want to go out and get food? All right, Kevin, do you want to go out and get food right now? Or you want somebody to bring you food? Uh, bring me food. Ladies and gentlemen, you ain't no hunter or gatherer. Let somebody else do all the work. Use DoorDash. Did you forget that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. Dinner? Check. Deodorant? Check. Morning pick-me-up from Dunkin'? Check. Get everything you need whenever you need it with DoorDash. You want Chinese, they want pizza, and someone is craving Froyo? There is something for everyone on DoorDash. How do I know so much about DoorDash? Because I'm Greg Miller, and I use DoorDash all the time. I got the dash pass, so I don't pay for delivery. Sometimes Jen and I go in there, we're like, what do we want for dinner? We don't know what we want for dinner. We don't know what we want for dinner. So we look at the, what's being recommended, we pick from there. It's great, and it's different, and it comes to us, and it's hot, and you get to track them as they come, and they tell you where it is in the process. DoorDash is great. Now, you can get the grocery store essentials you need with DoorDash, too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app. Choose what you want from where you want it, and your items will be left safely outside your door with their contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the u.s puerto rico australia and now canada you can support your neighborhood go-to's or choose from your favorite national chain restaurants like popeyes chipotle and cheesecake factory a long time ago i thought it was chipotle but it's chipotle did you know that kevin <laughs> <laughs> for a limited time for a limited time our listeners can get 25 percent off and zero delivery fees on their first order of 15 dollars or more when you download the doordash app and enter the code games 2021 for our canadian listeners use the code games ca that's 25 percent off up to a 10 dollar value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the doordash app in the app store and enter the code games 2021 in the u.s US and games CA in Canada. Don't forget games 2021 in the US games CA in Canada for 25% off your first order with DoorDash subject to change terms apply. 
Our next sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, is Burrow. If you haven't heard us talk about Burrow furniture lately, you haven't listened to Tim Gettys talk about his couch. What does he talk about all the time? It's got a USB charger built in. He loves that. But Burrow's even better than that. Most of us haven't found our forever home, which makes buying furniture a double-edged sword. You're either buying some cheap futon that you'll just leave out on the curb someday, or you're investing in an inexpensive sofa that might last forever, but definitely becomes a pain in the butt when it's time to move. You think someone would have figured out how to create quality furniture built for the way we act actually live wherever we live well someone has it's burrow burrow is easy to shop for shop for everything you need for your living room online no far-flung warehouses no high pressure sales people plus burrow's world-class support team is available for you whenever you need them it's easy to assemble and it's easy to move burrow's innovative modular design and super helpful instructions make assembling and disassembling your furniture quick and hassle-free and when it's time to move your burrow furniture won't hold you back uh kevin you've known tim a long time and you always call him a big old dum-dum he had no problem installing this furniture Furniture, that means it's pretty simple, right? Yep. Designed for the way you live, their credenzas are actually tall enough to fit next-gen consoles standing vertically. Their award-winning Nomad Sofa has Tim's built-in USB charger for all-day power. Plus, you get fast and free shipping on every order. It saves you an average of $100 on large items like a couch and a logistics headache. Right now, you can get $75 off your first order at burrow.com slash games. That's burrow, B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash games for $75 off your burrow purchase. Burrow dot com slash games all right back to the rubber report i'll tell you janet i've done what uh, hundreds maybe even dozens of hours of content at kind of funny since uh we broke away in 2015 and kevin counting out of the now fancy ads we do like five four is like it brings up so much anxiety me for for the show that's oh, a garbage truck on fire like i get i don't know why i get so panicked i come out and just go and everyone be like oh it's it's kind of funny but you know it's weird that's a nice ad though yeah, no. Uh, if you're, if you're, if you, we. This is the downside, I think, of like being now the Patreon, the Patreon. This entire week, we started doing fancy ads, so we're putting in like music and like lower thirds, and Roger's killing it. But we come out of the ads, and we're like, man, that was a great ad, <laughs> wasn't it? Patreon, people like, yeah, Fuck sorry, up, what ad? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Back to it. Uh, number three, let's talk about some battlefield stuff. We're gonna start over at Gamespot with the one, the only, the Eddie. Uh, Eddie writes, EA's communications director for shooter games, including Battlefield, has acknowledged the frustrations of. Fans Fans awaiting more details on the new game, asking for patience. Andy McNamara said on Twitter that people have come into his Twitter mentions to call for him to be fired. He understands people are eager to find out more about Battlefield 6 and assured them he's doing his best to reveal the game the right way at the right time. Quote, if I read my tweets, I believe a number of Battlefield fans are calling that I get sacked already. I understand your frustration, but I can tell you I'm killing myself to deliver something I think you'll love when the time is right. Patience, please, he said. McNamara added that the entire development team is working hard as well to get the new Battlefield game ready for its big reveal. Possibly the sirens are on my end, everybody. Just a heads up. I'm, I don't. I haven't been able to they say are. that in years, we but the sirens going by. We can hear them. Oh, does that feel good? The sirens are on our end, everybody. No, it's a bad uh, thing. As part, it's a bad thing. Well, I'm sure yeah, it's bad for whoever <laughs> is in trouble out there. You know what I mean? But, you know. Maybe it's just a parade. Who knows? As part of the EA's earning uh, re- release on Tuesday. Did I skip something here? No, no. As part of the EA Tuesday, the company also confirmed that Battlefield 6, or whatever the game is called, will be available on both generations of consoles, in addition to PC. McNamara uh, said he's aware people are concerned that this approach might negatively impact the game, and he again asked fans to be patient until EA reveals more. During the call, EA management said Battlefield 6 will look and perform best on PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S thanks to the improved horsepower of those consoles that can deliver higher player counts and better destruction. The PS4 and Xbox One versions will be no slouch, though. As EA said, the game looks and runs great on any platform it's available on. Man, what other game said that once and then it was a huge fucking problem? God. We have no way of knowing. Can't remember. Uh, The new game is also coming to PC, and as usual, the performance will depend on the stature of your rig. Uh, Battlefield 6 will be officially revealed in June, though a specific date has not been announced yet. EA's big summer showcase, EA Play Live, is scheduled for July, and the game is sure to have a presence at that event as well. If that wasn't enough, we go to IGN.com, where the one, the only Rebecca Valentine adds, it looks like the next Battlefield game is being planned for a holiday or thereabouts release this year, 
at least according to EA's financial plans. In a slide presentation accompany its earnings report today, EA lays out its plans for releases for the rest of the fiscal year, placing Battlefield in Q3. Uh, this is a fiscal calendar, so, EA, so, so for EA, that means Battlefield 6, or whatever it ends up being called, is headed this way uh, between October and December. EA confirmed on its earning call today that Battlefield was being developed by four studios, EA DICE, uh, Criterion, uh, DICE LA, and EA Gothenburg are all contributing. EA has also confirmed that the game will be released on previous gen and current gen consoles as well as PC. Janet, do you care about Battlefield? No. Me neither, and I'm so sick of hearing about Battlefield. I feel like this keeps coming up. It's like we have this tumbler of conversation topics, and every so often I reach in and find this battle. But it's happening so much, and all the news is is that it's going to be revealed next month. I don't Maybe know how we should it start keeps getting kicked around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe this is the time. This is the time to jump in. No, I mean, like, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a shooter guy in general. Like, even Call of Duty. Like, you know, I'm not. This isn't me saying don't. I'm just. It's more the fact that like. If I, I feel for the money, as many times as we've talked about Battlefield, I feel like we should know more about Battlefield. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's well, you're not alone in that feeling. I mean, I, I think, too, EA in general, people are always looking for a reason to mm-hmm. take the screwdriver to EA. Um, some, you know, partially for valid reasons. It's not it's definitely far from a perfect company. But uh, yeah, it's intense. And I think, too, like even just the stuff you bring up where it's like, hey, people are calling for me to be fired and like. I'm trying really hard. Like, that's just, oh, uh, that stuff bums me out. Like, totally, and that's the real God. reason to drop it in, of course. Andy McNamara, a friend of the show, former game and former EIC. He's been on We Have Cool Friends when he took this EA job. Uh, of course, Andy, a great dude. And, of course, not that I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, right, of, like, none of you are the ones doing this, but, like, fuck off. Like, it's not like Andy's the one, like, not giving people information. He should be fired for it. Like, clearly, it's part of the marketing plan to get all the information out there. Ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? The Internet's ridiculous sometimes. But I just feel like I talk so much about Battlefield with nothing to say. And, I, and yeah. I'm, I'm part of the problem because I just talked about it again. And I'm sure there'll be more times before God it actually it. Before has any uh, relevant information. Yeah, absolutely. God uh, 100%. Right. I can bet a lot on that. They've won. They've won. We're talking about the game. There's nothing happening. I don't even know what to do about it. Speaking of games we know nothing about, we know something about. Number four, uh, Remedy, is, Remedy is working on six games, apparently. We go to IGN.com, where Joe Scrabbles writes, Control developer Remedy Entertainment has confirmed that it started working on yet another new game, meaning the studio has six publicly announced games yet to arrive. In Remedy's latest business review, the CEO, uh, Taro Vitrala, uh, explained that as of last quarter, quote, almost all of our internal Internal control developers have now moved on to work on other Remedy projects, including a new, exciting, early phase project, end quote. Asked for comment on whether the, that game was separate to Remedy's previously announced projects, uh, the CEO said, quote, yes, we have a new project, but it is in very, very early stages. Nothing more to expand on that, end quote. Remedy didn't comment on if that new project had a publisher at this time. This means that pub, uh, that this means that publicly Remedy is now working on as is not, is working on six as yet unreleased games. It's creating single player modes for first person shooters Crossfire X and Crossfire HD. Two projects for Epic Games set in the Control slash Alan Wake universe. Parentheses one build as a AAA game and the other as a smaller project. Unrevealed free to play co op game Vanguard and new early stage project. The new early stage project. It's worth bearing in mind that since being founded in 1996, Remedy has released just nine games, meaning that this is a huge increase in scope from just a few years ago. It's a major increase in project size for Remedy, and the CEO adds that in the quarterly review, the company has expanded to 281 employees, and it doesn't seem to be stopping growth anytime soon. Quote, we have now started to implement the new next phase of our strategy to reach ambitious long-term growth objectives, he wrote. That growth can only have been helped by the fact that Remedy recently got its big Biggest ever financial year uh, without releasing a single game. Janet, what did you think of Control number one? Uh, I loved Control. I have a physical copy <laughs> right here. I brought it. I brought it specifically <laughs> waiting for this moment to arrive. Damn, uh, I had she gotten got props. the code. <laughs> yes, I have props. I try to bring on, um, I have so much stupid nerd stuff. I try to bring it on here so I can be like, see, it's for work. <laughs> There's a purpose. Boom. There's a purpose. There you Boom. go. Did I get this game digitally because I wrote the guide for it? Yes. Did I buy it again physical at Best Buy after having a lot of trouble getting it in this stupid steel book? Absolutely, I did. Uh, I love Control. It was my game of the year that year. I am 
very down for Remedy doing more stuff and seeing what comes out of that team. Admittedly, this it was my first Remedy game. I did not play Alan Wake. I did not oh, play their other games. So um, this, yeah, Quantum Break and their other, their other games, you know, 1996, those nine games. Yeah, I don't know any of them, just, <laughs> just this one. But this is, I think this was a great, I mean, starting point. I can't, if they have anything sure. that's close to sure. this good, that'd be fire um i think it's a great time to you know be a remedy fan as someone that just jumped in like i'm excited for what they have next i love this game so damn much i i just want more of what they're doing i'm looking forward most of the part of the control alan wake stuff i might go back and play alan wake i know it's on game pass or was sure on game pass is, at sure one point is. so yeah what about you are you excited about about more stuff from remedy did you like control are you a control stan yeah, I loved Control. Control's great. Yeah. Um, uh, before that, I I even I loved Quantum Break, which I thought was just a really cool idea and like a cool you know TV show movie to get lost in. Uh, and before then, yeah, you know Max Payne has a formative thing on me. I know you were probably two years old when I was playing Max Payne in college or on my well, PS2. What year was it? Ooh, I mean, it was what it was PS2 and I was playing in college, so it would have been like what oh I'll, i'm gonna say oh two oh three somewhere uh, in there. i was in second slash third grade jesus fucking christ you don't even know what it was like following that crying baby around the blood mazes you know what I mean? um, no i probably would have been horrified yeah no you would you like would like make, like make it um so th- my thing here is like it's this is a question that's come up before on this show recently of is it is, does it concern you when a studio staffs up quickly and yeah, the whole thing here of like, okay, cool. They've only ever released, you know, nine games total. So six games, is that outrageous? I, I'm of the mind to say no, especially if you're hiring people who are coming in inspired by your current work. Do, do you as a control fan get worried that they're taking on too much? No, I feel like let's let's find out together. <laughs> um, especially too, I'm someone that, you know, doesn't make games, hasn't been on that side. Um, yeah. Other than, I guess, just being negative, which I know sometimes I can be negative. Um, I don't have a reason to be concerned about this. I mean, I think... This is kind of a, again, not a developer, but there have been amazing games from incredibly small teams. So I don't think scaling up is necessarily a bad thing. I guess there's always concern with that they maybe did bite off more than they can chew. And obviously, like, I always have concerns of crunch when it comes to games and projects. So hopefully it is sometimes when you add more people, I'm sure you can relate to this having, you know, owned a company and worked at companies. Sometimes when you add in more people, it doesn't like spread the work out. It just like adds more work. They're like, now we have someone to do a new thing. I'm like, no, no, no. What if that person helped me do the thing yeah, yeah, that I can barely me, get yeah. done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, obviously there's concerns on that front. But what excites me about the kind of proposal they have here is the spread of very different types of games. And, you know, I just hope that they, you know, staffed accordingly and have people on projects that they're passionate about and stories they're excited to tell um and all of that so yeah you know I, I think we won't know if this is too much too soon until it's too late so let's roll those dice <laughs> oh, that's always great that's always great just roll the dice and see how it turns yep. out we'll see yeah, what happens. I, I think remedy is an incredibly talented studio uh i'm glad that they have kind of had a breakout uh, again at least with rent uh, with control in terms of new audiences new people like you finding them and being it so yeah i'm stoked to see what they are and see what it's all going to be but you know free to play game oh get out of here that could be garbage. You know, I was thinking of that, too. I think that's so funny that we have that in a day where we're spending so much time talking about the free to play model. And it's kind of looped in with these other things. So it's like you can't be upset because there's like eight other things that you probably want. <laughs> Listen, if like, you don't like okay. that one thing, we have other games that you we will gladly take. It's, $60 it's to $70 the broccoli for. on the it's the cheese covered broccoli on the side where it's like, well, it's broccoli. But then there's cheese. But then I don't really like broccoli. I don't know. We'll see if we get to it when we're done having the other meal uh number five let's give you some quick ones to get out of here with uh number five you're getting a scarlet nexus demo soon uh they tweeted today demo sequence initiated are you ready osf cadets prepare to take the lead and fight the others when scarlet nexus demo arrives play it first on xbox series x slash s i know we have a whole bunch of dorks around here excited for scarlet nexus so there you go get ready for the demo it actually looks really cool. I just like to throw it out there, but yeah. <laughs> and then uh, number six, I thought this was cool. Uh, I kind of missed this, and the, they actually detail it a bit more. But I'll get. Let's read it. Knockout City is doing a block party. That's actually cool. Knockout City, the dodgeball obsessed title from Velen Studios, is launching an in-game block party on May twenty-first. A free festival-style event offering ten straight days of non-stop party till you drop content, running from May twenty-first to May thirtieth. Uh, EA and Velen welcome all dodge brawlers. No out of the platform to crew up and fight for dominance in knockout city at no cost for 10 days starting at launch um i read that and i was like oh that seems cool like when does knockout city come out like i i, I knew it wasn't out yet 
so the free to play event, the, I was like, what does that mean? I looked into it on a, their their other site or whatever because that's like their PR thing. Then they had like the fun one. If you're is like me and a little bit hazy on the details. Uh, when they launch this game, it's free to play for 10 days with no uh, lockouts, no level caps. It's just literally Knockout City launches on May 21st. It is a game you can buy, but for 10 days, it will be free on all platforms with cross-play for you to go play with anybody you want to. What a brilliant move in terms of getting people in. This is what we always talk about when you talk about PlayStation Plus making Rocket League, right? How do you get people to come play your game? Take all the restrictions off and put it out there. That's awesome. Yeah, and they have that uh, deal with, uh, what is it, Xbox Game Pass, like the EA section, where they're going to be on there too. Yeah, EA. Like, that's uh, also Origin set up. Room. So, yeah, e- what, yeah, whatever the tagline for, yeah. you know, EA and Game Pass, like that whole thing. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really cool. Uh, have you played any Knockout City, Greg? I haven't. Uh, we sent uh, Snow Mike Mike to do a preview of it, and he came back uh, being like, it was cool, but he was in the same boat you are. He was like, is this going to actually connect? Is it going to be something that comes and goes? Like, I don't know. And yeah, I played then, it and think it's it's pretty fun. So you should at least check it out. Um, and anyone that listening. was my thing when I mean even before this, of course. But when they uh, put it, it's going to be on Game Pass day one. I was like, oh, well, I'm definitely going to try it because I Mike's impressions of it had got me interested in it. And then uh, Golden Boy, uh, one of my E uh, three co hosts, uh, he had done a bunch of streams of it and he had put up a bunch of clips from it. I was like, that actually looks kind of cool. It actually looks like a cool online multiplayer uh, dodgeball thing. So May twenty first, we can all check it out. Also, my father's birthday, if you're wondering. Number one crane operator, Greg Miller, May 21st. Nice. No big deal. Uh, everybody remind me leading up to it that I have to call him because I will forget probably. <laughs> uh, Nanobiology just calls out the EA program. It's just called EA Play. So there you go. Thank you. E- everything's EA Play. If we can't remember, it's just EA Play. Uh, Janet, I'm excited to see if I like Knockout City and I hang out for this uh, block party. Uh, but Knockout City and May 21st and my father's birthday are so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. You okay, Kev? That sounded like you were mad. What's wrong? You down? I sneeze too much and my throat is cut, I think. Oh, yeah. And your throat sounds really bad. Remember when you were losing your, throat the other, you were losing your voice the other day? Now it's even worse for some reason. Yeah, I know. It's scary. That's bad. Just stop yelling at Boris. <laughs> Out today! Rift Raccoon on Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox that One. That sounds like Ratchet and Clank. Like, how is that different? Than- That's like, yeah, how, do, how can we be very similar and just try to coast? You know what I mean? Everybody's going to be Googling Rift today. What do we do? Put out Rift Raccoon. Uh, Retro Machina on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Uh, Jin Conception on uh, Switch and PC. Fire Uggs Quest on Switch. Hunt Down PC and Mac. Uh, today, Game Devs of Color Expo announced that tickets are available uh, for its 2021 online event. Uh, Hitman 3, the Iconoclast, exclusive, ex- elusive target is live now. Uh, the world of K-pop is finally colliding with the grim universe of the hit asymmetrical horror game Dead by Daylight uh, mobile in the new chapter, All Kill, available today. And then GameSpot wrote, writes, uh, Achievement Hunters uh, have a busy few weeks ahead of them uh, as Microsoft kicks off another Gamer Score challenge. Until the end of May, every point of Gamer Score players earn also nets them an equal number of reward points. These points can be redeemed on the Microsoft Rewards app for real-life goodies. You do have to go opt into this before you start earning those Achievos, though. Uh, new dates for you. Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX Plus, is set for June 11th, 2021 on PS4 and Switch. Uh, Kawas, no, that's right. Kawasa? Ka- Kawasa? Jen, how are you saying this? Kawasa? C-A-U-S-A. Uh, Kawasa? 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 Sure. Voices of Dusk is leaving early access on May 26th. Uh, Skybound Games announced they're going to publish The Big Con. It's coming this summer at Xbox uh, Series X and S and Xbox One and PC. And I know that breaks my rule of giving you something that doesn't have an actual release date. But as always, I'm very excited for The Big Con, so I will, of course, promote it. Uh, <laughs> Prison Simulator Prologue is coming to Steam on May 20th. Then GameSpot reports Minecraft and Minecraft Dungeons are both getting new DLC packs in the near future, and they couldn't be more different. The Minecraft DLC is, on how to, is based on how to train your dragon film series while the dungeons pack takes players deep underwater and then the gorilla collective 2 is going to stream new game announcements reveals and more from studios of all sizes to gamers worldwide june 5th and 12th so there you go we worked obviously with the gorilla collective last year uh now they're doing the sequel and they're doing it over 5th june 12th great people making great games over there and helping people who are making great games get about uh, make sure you mark your calendars for that except on june 12th when i assume it competes with me and e3 at which point don't support them anymore forget the indies only come talk about triple a stuff with me sounds good 
Thank you. Thank you, Janet. I'm glad to have your support on this. Absolutely. Now, Kevin, I did a, it, yeah, we've hit, we are right, comments that thing. Because if you're, I know a lot of you joined the Twitch chat late. We went early because we have so much stuff going on today. But then I was like, wait, is my clock wrong? My clock's right. We did fine. So, Janet Garcia, I'm going to tell you, of course, that people can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, just like so many of them are now, where they can write into kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, rooster teeth, and listening on podcast services around the globe. Looks like we did pretty well since we corrected ourselves on a couple things as we went, but nanobiologist writes in to say, uh, the word I couldn't pronounce in Gaelic is slanche. Slanche is how I say cheers, like they say in the game. Or like they say in Watch that still be wrong somehow. You're probably still saying you know, it wrong. I, I guarantee it will be, but that's just how it is. I try. Slanche everybody. You know what I mean? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh, Janet, thank you so much for joining me. Where can people keep up with you? Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet under the handle Game Onesis. That's Game O-N-Y-S-U-S. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, Patreon, and probably some other social media that I just randomly signed up for in case it takes off. <laughs> TikTok. You got to get on the TikTok. You know what I mean? Put up all this I'm stuff. The, TikTok? I'm on there. I'm TikTok. But do you TikTok create TikTok content or do you just watch TikTok content? Oh, no, no. I create TikTok content. Oh, I got some. I clipped out uh, when I jumped into the, the wrong Discord channel. That blew up. Like, we got we got content oh, on there. I got to check that out. I didn't see that one. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, of course, you're not done yet. You have a post show to do with us on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, where, of course, you could go to write in to be part of the show. You could go to get the show ad free. You could go just to kick us a few bucks to say, hey, I really appreciate the content, but if you have no bucks tossed away, no big deal, please subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Listen on your podcast service of choice. Subscribe there. Click the bells, leave the reviews, do all the things that help the show get into new people's ears and hands. I'll tell you what though, because it's that thing where Games Daily usually right at the top of the, you know, number one uh, games podcast of the day, but this Dan Reichert business, Dan Reichert's got this new podcast coming up and he keeps putting up photos of us being beneath him. Don't listen to Dan Reichert, everybody. But you know what I mean? Have you seen this? You, have you seen this, Janet? Uh, Dan I Reichert? Being, yet. No. Ugh, you know what I mean? You just look at it. And, and when I, I see, see it, I'm, though, I'm going to keep scrolling. I'm just going to ignore it. That's I'm going to block for, right? whoever posted it. <laughs> exactly. You got to block it. See, what I'm doing right now, of course, is uh, typing into my machine because as I said this, there it is. It's the Fire Escape podcast. I tell you. Oh what, yeah, and no, gentlemen. that's oh, that's blowing up. Yeah. If you see this Fire Escape podcast on pod, you know what? Maybe you do. Click I obviously on the Fire haven't Escape listened. Podcast. I obviously haven't listened it, out of solidarity. If you do see it, you click on it and then you listen to it and then just to fuck with them, leave a five star review and tell them they're doing a great job <laughs> and tell them that we love Mary, we love Dan, and we love uh, Mike over there. And you know, I'm kidding around, of course. Every everybody go support the Fire Escape podcast. We need to get them on this thing too. Uh, as I was saying, we have another show to do. Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. The post show over there if you're watching live on twitch remember we are not immediately going live instead we are going to go down for a little bit while we go over and do a private recording with justin roiland for the kind of funny podcast that will then go up tomorrow on youtube.com slash kind of funny and then they'll be back here streaming at 1 p.m doing uh andy uh blessing play resident evil 8 for the first time if that wasn't enough remember at five o'clock uh it's going to be uh me and joey with dj khaled and megan fox playing Fortnite. we don't know how it happened either you can catch it on the evil geniuses site and of course go support poor janet everywhere she is i'll be back tomorrow with tim then it's blessing and tim on friday we got a post show to do patreon.com slash kind of funny game so until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you